Ok, so check this out. I built a full stack app which allows you to organize your tasks in a calendar view. This took less than 2 hours to develop and the whole codebase is under 400 lines of code. Impressive, right? I was able to achieve these results by employing modern tools focused on efficiency and, in the next few minutes, we'll look at the tech stack behind the app. Despite the small code base, we'll discuss a wide variety of technologies and, by the end of the video, you should have a clear idea about the powerful things you can achieve with little effort these days. The app is built on top of the Solid Start Meta framework, which will cover all our UI needs, while also providing a Node.js server environment for our backend work. Our client-server communication will be handled via TRPC and all the information is stored in an SQLite database using Prisma as an ORM. Without further ado, let's start writing some code. First, we'll initialize our Solid Start project using the vid and TypeScript template and then we'll add the NPM dependencies needed in the project. So, install the following. Prisma for mapping database tables to JS objects the TRPC client and server packages as an alternative to REST, and finally, Uno CSS as the atomic CSS engine we'll be using to style our UI. We'll get back to Uno's advantages in a second. There are multiple ways to tackle a full stack project, but I prefer to start working on the backend first, expose the necessary create, read, update, and delete logic to the client, and then call that API, or in our case, the TRPC client methods, while building the UI. So let's initialize Prisma in our project with the SQLite as the data source provider. As a result, we get a schema.prisma file where I'm going to define a task model. An ORM's job is to abstract away the work you would normally do by directly querying a database. Instead of working with SQL or some other vendor-specific language, you get a chance to work with TypeScript objects and methods. With the model in place, we can run the Prisma migrate command to generate the SQL table and the associated TypeScript code. Then, under the services directory, I created a task service file where all our basic data operations will be defined. In here, I'm getting a new instance of the Prisma client. Then, in a create task method, we'll simply use Prisma create to persist our data in the database. A few things to consider here. First of all, our method receives a partial task, which will mark all the task fields optional. This is common when creating new entities, and some of the information might not be filled in by the user yet. Second of all, all database operations are time-consuming, and in order to avoid blocking the execution of your code, they rely on promises, hence our use of a sync await. Finally, in real projects, you should always validate your user input. In a minute, you'll see that we'll do some initial validations in our TRPC procedures using Zod, but you might want to do various other checks in the service method as well. Following the create example, we'll then define a read method allowing us to query the table for tasks created on a specific date, then an update method which modifies the task entry based on unique identifier, and finally, a delete task method which simply removes the entity from the table. This is all the work required to cover the basic create, read, update, and delete actions needed in most use cases. Our task service file will end up having 45 lines of code. We'll combine these with the schema code we added earlier, and we end up with 61 lines of code written so far. With the database operations in place, let's now work on the rest of the backend logic needed to link these operations to the client code. In order to achieve this in an efficient manner, we'll dump the classical REST API approach, and we'll employ a much more developer-friendly solution instead, TRPC. I looked at the many benefits of the TRPC architecture in a past video, so feel free to check it out if you are interested in more details on the topic. The TLDR is that TRPC uses HTTP calls under the hood and a single backend endpoint to facilitate the client-server communication. We'll see in a second how easy it is to make calls to a TRPC backend from the browser. Back to the code, Solid Start supports API endpoints, so we can simply create a TS file under the routes API TRPC directory. In here, we'll create a TRPC instance, and then, in a router, I'm going to define the procedures exposed to our client. The implementation is straightforward, since we are pretty much mapping our previous Prisma service methods to TRPC procedures. Let's look in detail at the create task function, and then we can easily extrapolate the knowledge to all other options. So, the create task accepts an object as an input, where we are enforcing some validations using Zad. Then, since the create action will mutate our data, let's use the mutation method where we'll simply call the create task service. Easy enough, right? If you are lost, don't worry. We'll trace this flow again in a second. 
Before that, let's add a get method to retrieve the entities associated with a specific day, an update and a delete method to complete the logic. Finally, solid start expects routes to expose get and post handlers. Remember that all this will be run by solid start in an API route on the server. So, when the browser will make a call to the API TRPC endpoint, solid start will execute either the get or the post handler and the request will be routed to one of the TRPC procedures. In the procedure, we are performing some basic validation and then we are simply calling the service method where the Prisma ORM is employed. The ORM does all the database work for us and the data is fetched or mutated accordingly. Here we are. In just 120 lines of code, we got all the necessary backend functionality. Now let's shift our focus on the front end and have some real fun. Before discussing solid components, I want to briefly mention Uno CSS. When it comes to styling, you have a wide variety of options to choose from. You could use preprocessors like SAS, CSS modules, component libraries, or utility CSS frameworks such as Tailwind. Uno CSS is an interesting project similar to Tailwind, but with some optimizations, which focuses on generating on demand atomic CSS. It's easy to edit into our project by updating the vid configuration, and all in all, this is the only CSS I actually wrote for the app. Anything else styling related was achieved using Uno's utility classes. Jumping into Solid, I'm going to use a basic Solid store to keep track of and share the calendar view data between my components. Inside the data service.tsx file, I'm declaring an interface defining the specific information for the calendar view. We'll need the active date, which is selected by the user from the calendar, the current date, and some information about the active week. I also have other various utility methods to work with dates in this file. I could have used a third-party library for some of the logic, but working with dates in the browser is fairly easy these days. All in all, this file has 60 lines of code and is the largest one in the project. Next, let's jump into the routes index.tsx file and work on some UI. This component will be served every time the user accesses the root path of our app. In the home function component, I'm getting a reference to the store and I'm defining some internal state using signals. Whenever the user changes the active week or day, we'll make sure to correctly fetch all the tasks and the add function will be called when a new task is added for a specific date. This fetch function showcases the ease with which we can call the RPC procedures from the front end. We are performing a get call here, but in a minute you'll see that the create calls are easy as well. As a quick side note, you might have noticed that we are using a TRPC object here. I defined it in a TRPC service file, where we are simply calling the create proxy client method and pointing it to the right backend API endpoint we developed a few minutes ago. The JSX part is pretty straightforward as well. First, I am rendering the app header component. Then, I am iterating over the weekdays to display a day card. Finally, in the next section, I am rendering the list of task components associated with the active date. Before taking a look at some of the solid components I just mentioned, please help me fight the YouTube algorithm by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Ok, so we are past the 300 lines of code mark and we'll work on the header component. In the JSX, I'm displaying the current day on the left hand side and a week navigation on the right hand side. In the rendering process, I am using some of those date utility classes from the date service file, and whenever the user changes the week or the active date, the update is pushed to the store and all other components will react accordingly. The day card is simply a presentational component which accepts some properties as the input and displays some nice UI the user can interact with. Finally, the task entry component will either render an existing task object or will allow users to create a new one. I'm defining the title and the details as signals since these can be changed in the UI and then linking them to the two input fields in the JSX. When any of those inputs change, we'll call the update task procedure and the change will be propagated to the database. However, if the task object has no ID, it means it is a newly added entity and we can save it to the database using the create task procedure. The task entity file puts us a little bit over 400 lines of code and our work is pretty much done. Of course, this is just a basic app prototype and you can build a lot on top of it, but this tech stack will help you achieve fast and efficient dev cycles. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this one and until next time, thank you for watching.